you inspiration, education, and a bunch of tips to help you on your journey to a better body, a better fitness, a better everything, a better life. And, and today, actually, I already recorded a podcast episode and I'm just like on fire. And some days I just feel like I want to keep going. And today I want to talk a little bit about diets, and this is probably going to be a little bit of a shorter episode. Um, and I think that there's this whole stigma, like diets don't work, diets don't work. And we, we can talk all about the, the diet culture and how everybody is trying to sell the fastest way to lose weight, because why is that a lot of America is overweight or unhealthy or walking borderline overweight and they're, and they're, it's just not looking good for our country, for our world. And so the diet culture though, is, is also telling us like, well, we have to somewhat accept who we are and how we are. And I'm going to be honest, when it comes down to that whole like self-acceptance thing, I think that that is so misunderstood. So I've been on a tangent, tangent kind of a podcast day. So this is going to be kind of a two piece here. First off, I want to talk to you guys about diet culture and the whole loving yourself, how you are and all that kind of stuff. And then the second piece about this is understanding the whole diets don't work mindset. And I honestly had the topic posted that I was going to do, which is just about diets don't work, diets do work, all that jabber. But I think it's really important to address that first piece first. It's the whole like acceptance of yourself, how you are and that kind of stuff. And I want to say this with complete empathy and I don't even know if empathy is the word, but I want you guys to understand this isn't about like, you shouldn't be happy how you are, or you should be happy how you are. It's not about that at all. It's understanding what self-acceptance actually is and what self-care actually is and self-love actually is. And so, and that's going to help you, I think, honestly, understand the whole like diets work, diets don't work, all that kinds of stuff. So first and foremost, I think that when it comes to the whole diet culture, you know, kind of like, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. The people that are trying to tell you guys not to diet, not to work on losing weight, not to do those things, just be who you are. It's because honestly, a lot of the things that people are doing to try and lose weight are extremely restrictive, extremely limiting in their life and making them feel miserable. And I think that where this quote unquote, like, I don't know, diet demons, I'm going to call them diet demons right now. I'm trying to think how to call it what to call them, um, is they're trying to get people to understand, like, you don't have to live in misery. Like, it's okay to just like, at some point be like, Hey, this is who I am. If you don't like it, fuck off. Like, that's really what they're trying to get you guys to say. And I do 100% agree with that. In fact, okay, this is a true thing that I experienced. All right. I am a CrossFit athlete. And if you ever watch any of the CrossFit games or any of the CrossFit semifinals or any of the events, you're often going to see a very diverse group of people on the, on the floor, not just the athletes, but also the, the judges and the volunteers. Some of them don't look very fit. Okay. A lot of people judge those people for being in a sporting competition, a fitness competition, because they don't look very fit, but nobody knows where that person is at on their journey. They are judging and assuming that this person is just self-acceptance. This is who I am. This is how I'm going to be. They have no idea if that person just lost 50 pounds, a hundred pounds, if they just had a baby and they're coming back from that, if they've got some kind of a health issue that they're trying to just, nobody fucking knows. Okay. But they're going to judge them. Right. So self-acceptance is, and, and, and this is the, the opposite of this whole, like accepting yourself, how you are, right. Is that diet culture is trying to say, or the, the diet demon is trying to say like, just love yourself how you are. The opposite of that is like knowing that this is how you are right now, but it's okay to say, Hey, I, I actually think that I am capable of more. I actually think that I can be better than I am right now. And there is nothing wrong with wanting to change how you look. For instance, here's a perfect example or an, an analogy. Imagine you wake up every day and you're like on four to five hours of sleep, but you're okay. You're getting by. You can manage your life and all those things. You're accepting that, right? What if one week you decide, you know what? I would actually really like to see how good I feel if I got seven to eight hours of sleep a night. Now, guess what? Maybe every day, what was feeling good 
now you realize it was actually pretty bad. You got used to it. And now you feel amazing. It's the same fucking thing with your body. You might be okay and you might accept how you are right now, but maybe you have something more that you're capable of in the gym. Maybe you're complacent being able to do a hundred pound back squat. Maybe you want to get to a body weight back squat. It's okay to want to pursue greatness. That's what makes a, that's what makes a human. It's what makes life worth a journey because we're always trying to improve, right? So understanding this is that loving yourself, how you are, self-acceptance, it's also okay to say, I want to change. I want to see what I'm capable of. And that also means you need to be excited about those obstacles. Pursuing the goal of getting heavier back squats means guess what? You're going to have to train with a little bit more intensity. You're going to have to push something that you, you're going to have to lift something you've never lifted before with getting extra sleep. Maybe you're having to cut out nighttime Netflix, or maybe you're having to cut out some nighttime habits. Maybe you're having to cut back on work, whatever it is, you're going to experience some kind of a struggle to have, make that happen. Right? So understand that that work has to be worth it. And you have to be somewhat excited for the work. In my last podcast episode, I talk a lot about this. Um, so that's part one of this whole self-love thing is understanding that like, we're going to have to do that. Now, as I'm saying this stuff is self-love sometimes is working hard on yourself, self-acceptance, all those things we put, we pour into everything else. So all those people are telling you, just accept yourself how you are. It's just the way it is. Your life is really busy. Yada, yada, yada. You should just be happy with how you are, are basically saying like, it's okay to like bust your ass everywhere else in your life. Cause you don't have time and energy to put into yourself. Is that really self-love self-care? self-acceptance? No. Now I'm not saying that I want people beating themselves up, running themselves into the ground. What I'm saying is like, you need to have enough value in yourself to say I'm worth working hard for. And that's really the main thing I want to talk about. I'm not going to beat that down too much today because I, that wasn't the point of my, my episode today. I really want to just kind of start with that because I think it's really important for people to understand that like, it's okay to love yourself. And in fact, it's been said, talk about abs. I, I said this to somebody yesterday is like, you are less likely to get abs if you don't love yourself first, because the people that don't love themselves, who they are, are never going to commit to the work to get those abs. Whereas if you love yourself first, you are more likely to get abs. Cause guess what? In my last episode, I talk about all those environmental factors and all that stuff. If you love yourself enough and you value yourself enough, you will be selfish in that pursuit you will say no thank you with no problem because you have a goal. And that's because you love yourself enough to see what you can do. So anyways, now the reason I'm talking about this kind of stuff and the diet demons and all that kind of stuff is because I was thinking about this yesterday is this whole concept of like diets don't work, people work, right? And, or diets do work. work. And and it's, it's just such a misunderstanding about diet culture and, and everything that, you know, and I just think that my message to everybody is always going to be stop trying to find the right fucking diet and let's teach you how to eat. Okay. Because I don't eat the same way as the majority of my clients. I give them a lot of the strategies that I use based on the feedback that they give me, but I also take their preferences into consideration. So I want to start by saying complete opposite diets do work, but diets only work if the people are willing to work on the diet. Okay. So like saying a diet doesn't work is like saying school doesn't work. No school works. The kids have to do the work. Okay. And that means that the kids have to be engaged enough in classes to be able to do the work. They have to have accountability. They have to have a reason to show up every day, right? So it's the same thing with a diet. Now, very different than school is <laughs> there's kind of like a, you know, one plus one equals two analogy or equation with a lot of school. It's, it's black or white. There's not a lot of variables. The problem with diets is that the diet culture that the diet demons are trying to save you all from um, are trying to preach a lot of like, they're trying to take a lot of, specific things and tell you why this dietary protocol is going to be the right one for you. 
you know, you've got these insulin problems. You definitely should be low carb. That's why you're not losing weight. Um, or you've got, you know, you're a high level athlete. You're doing too much fat and not enough carbs. That's why you're not losing any weight. Um, your, you know, which honestly that actually isn't a, a fad. That's actually a real thing. Um, your, you know, you're eating too many meals throughout the week or throughout the day. Like you should probably try fasting. Uh, you're not burning fat for fuel. That's why you're not losing any weight. There's all these different crazy things. In my next episode, I'm going to really dive into a lot of the science behind the whole, that fat carb stuff. But anyways, so the problem is people are looking for dietary protocols based on garbage explanations or garbage marketing is, and that's where like keto got the craze and all these things got the craze because they're, they're promoting like ketogenic diets cause fat loss. No calorie deficits cause fat, cause fat, cause fat loss. And if you're monitoring calories on a uh, ketogenic diet, you're going to lose weight. doesn't matter if it was carbs or fat, you're still going to lose weight because of the calories, not because of the ketogenic part of it. But anyways, so the problem is, is that people are looking for a diet to follow, to lose weight. And they're trying protocols that they're being fed are the solution that are in line with their preferences, their core values, their lifestyle, how they like to eat. Now I get it. Like in my last episode, I talked about like, there's going to be some pull and play, right? We can't live on McDonald's for the rest of our life. By the way, Jared did lose weight eating Subway every day. Um, so, you know, there is ways to incorporate those things, but there is no diet protocol that is going to be the best diet for everybody. Diets do work, but you should be building a diet that is built around you. And most diets that work, if a, if a diet does work for you, whether it's low carb, high carb, keto zone, Adkins, um, weight watchers, whatever it is, it's because the person that did the diet and took it, they were able to use it and then they were able to tweak it in maintenance to allow it to be sustainable for them long-term. And I say that because a diet didn't work if you lost weight. A diet only worked if you maintained it for the rest of your life. My example, I had an eating disorder years ago, you guys know that. I yo-yoed my weight for five or six years of restricting, binging a little bit, restricting, binging a little bit. Um, call, that, call that restricting and then recovery, right? Um, and then I started CrossFit, gained weight. And in 2015 was my last time I had to do any sort of like diet, quote unquote diet. And I didn't change my diet. I actually added more food into my diet. I added more and my cat's sitting on my lap right now. Um, I added more carbohydrates. I, I actually took the diet away. I, I stopped the restrictive food protocols and actually just realized, all right, I'm going to control calories. I'm going to make sure I'm hitting my macros. I'm going to make sure I'm prioritizing the right kinds of foods and getting in enough nutrients. Um, and that's how I still live my life. Only thing that's changed is I'm eating calories at maintenance and sometimes a little bit of a surplus because I'm training hard. So the diet isn't what works. I'm sorry, the diet is worse. The diet does work, but it's the dietary protocols that you guys have to get away from. Following into a fad is the problem. And when it comes down to it all, the only diet that is going to work is the one that you are willing to work on. And the one that you're willing to work on is going to be the one that gets you results, but also allows you to feel your best. You got to have those two things. If you don't feel good on it and you're not getting results, you're likely not going to want to keep doing it. And when it comes to losing weight, I'm going to be honest, you're going to have to be a little bit hungry. There's going to be things that you're going to want to eat and you probably shouldn't eat. It's going to be times where you want to have this and you probably should have that. Like I get it. But at the end of the day, if you guys want to find a sustainable diet, you've got to realize that diets do work. Stop looking for fads and start looking for your own personal start, start looking for, start, start thinking about what you actually enjoy and value in your day-to-day. -day. Like what kinds of foods do you like and build a diet around there. And that's why the first week of coaching is all about, let's get a food journal. Let's see where you're currently eating. So I can make some tweaks because sometimes I don't have to completely overhaul a person's diet. Sometimes it's just filling in some gaps and taking a couple of things and changing them out. That's my preferred method. So Shorter episode today because I just want to talk a little bit about diets because diets do work, but you got to do the work on the diet, which means you got to find one that's going to work for you.
And a diet that has a name and a label, the only name it should ever have is your own. The Cheryl diet, the Nikki diet, the Joanne diet, the Brian diet, because you should be building it. And all foods should be a part of your diet. You just want to make sure that they're the right ones for you. That's it.